Haha, <laughs> very funny. What's going on YouTube? So first thing I want to address in this video real quick is the last video that I uploaded was in fact a video that I had up before. There was a little bit of an issue with it. I decided to take that down, fix it, re-upload it just so it's still on the channel, just so you can still reference it. If it's your first time checking in, I'm doing a series uh, about getting my buddy Chris's truck ready for the ultimate call out challenge in April. Part number one is the one that was re-uploaded, so it's a little bit out of order, so there's one and two and three is gonna be coming very, very soon. So for today's video, let's get into something that I honestly thought I would never purchase or install on any of my trucks. So for tonight's project, we are actually going to be putting a light bar on the tow rig. Now, I will be the first one to admit I am not really the biggest fan of light bars. Um, mostly because half the time they are really just, they look, they just don't look like they belong. My style is really uh, simple and clean and, and really less is more in my opinion. Um, but really, the whole reason that I'm putting a light bar on this truck, and I'll show you guys, so you can see my awesome headlights and my awesome blacked out fog lights. Now, I think I have an issue with my tip -em in this truck because I have put countless HID kits, countless LED bulbs in these headlights. And for some reason, I cannot keep a set of HIDs or LED lights in this truck. The, the fog lights get messed up, the headlights get messed up. I put stock bulbs back in it and there is absolutely no issue. So I've tried Morimoto, I've tried big name brand, not cheap stuff. So the solution that I have come up with, because I really like these headlights, I really like the smoked fog lights, I'm not really willing to give up that look, is to put a light bar in between this opening right here. Now I had some requirements if I was going to put a light bar in there, it had to be the cleanest possible uh, it, it had to look like it belonged. So I think I found something that I'm going to be happy with that you're not really going to be able to notice too much. It's not a dual row, it's a single row uh, 30 inch LED bar. So let me show you that. So this is actually from Rough Country and it's their Black Series. Uh, and like I said, it's a 30 inch single row curved. And that was really one of the requirements that I wanted. I wanted, number one, a single row bar. It had to be curved. I want it to be, you know, in the blacked out series. I know Rigid makes like a black series too as well. Um, but when you are looking for a single row curved bar that's 30 inches or, you know, around the 40 inch, there's really not that many options. So I didn't really want a 20 inch one and I wasn't really looking for a 40 inch one. So this is actually one of the only companies that I found to make something exactly like that. So this is the light. You can kind of see the whole housing's blacked out inside there. And these were actually the brackets that came with this, which are not going to work. So I ran up to Garofalo Enterprise, my buddy Michael, where I get all my parts from, and he got me hooked up. These are actually, I believe, from Rigid. I actually just need to enlarge these holes a little bit. You can kind of see right there. They're a little bit bigger on the factory ones, so I just gotta drill them out quick. And like I said, we're gonna mount that right in between that space in the bumper and mount it right to the tow hooks. Obviously, you can tell I don't have tow hooks on this thing. I never really had them on there. I, you know, the amount of times that I've ever needed to use it tow hooks on this truck is about zero. So I don't like the way they looked. I take them off on pretty much all my trucks. And again, if you do have a light bar on your truck, if it's on the roof, if it's anywhere else, I mean that's that's your taste. I don't have anything against you, your truck, your build, anything. I have no problem with anybody who puts light bars on anything. It's just my taste, my style. Uh, I respect everybody's builds. Let's get to install this. So we got those holes drilled out and then we got the longer brackets mounted on there. You can kind of see the way I want to mount this, I needed these longer ones to reach past the end of that light bar. The shorter ones were, you know, not gonna come down far enough. So this is just me holding it here with my hands. You can kind of see how those longer mounts are gonna just attach right to the tow hook mounts. I'm gonna get this mocked up and centered. I'm gonna drill those holes and then mount it right like that.
Oh, this one's even worse. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is taking way too long. This is just a really shitty spot to get your freaking hands in. All right guys, so we just finished up wrapping up mounting of the light bar. Kind of took me quite a bit longer than I was expecting. There's some uh, clearance issues behind where I really wanted to mount it. So that took me a little while to figure out and then I had to go get longer bolts. Also, I don't know if you could tell, this was actually filmed over like two days because some things came up and I had to take care of that stuff. So we're on like day two of this install, which uh, not too much left. All we really got to do is do the wiring, uh, which I'll show you guys what comes in the kit, but yeah. Let me know what you guys think. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out so far. All right, so here's pretty much everything left. They give you the relay with the wiring, then a fuse with a positive and negative. This then goes to your light, and then this is the switch. So one thing that I always do when I'm wiring in my own stuff is, you can kind of see. That's all the wire that they give you. Now, in my engine bay and when I do wiring and stuff, even though they give you all this extra extra wire, I never use it. I always end up cutting and splicing things shorter just because usually what ends up happening is you end up with this zip tied somewhere and I just, I hate that. I hate the way it looks. Another wiring tip that I can give you guys, if you're not getting a kit or something, you always, always, always use a relay. If you don't use relays, that's a really good way to uh, have an issue. So I'm gonna start putting this wiring in. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get it done tonight, but I'll at least temporarily hook it up to you guys so you can kind of see before and after. All right guys, so here's what I mentioned before. So you got this relay and you got this short of a lead to get to your battery positive and negative. You can kind of see how long that is. So I ideally want to mount this somewhere here where all my other electronics are. But by the time I reach from the negative to the positive, it doesn't really give me enough room and that's why I end up usually lengthening or shortening all these wires. So from here from the relay, you can kind of see uh, it's all tangled in here, but you can see you see how much they give you To go all the way to the light which I'm not going to use anywhere near that amount So uh, long story short, I'm going to end up shortening and lengthening a lot of this stuff to get it exactly where I want to mount everything and also another thing um, That I usually do is this switch obviously doesn't match anything Come on this switch doesn't really match any of the other switches I have in the cab. So I might end up, you can kind of see right here. Actually, you can kind of see better here. This is really just a three wire switch. So I might end up reusing this connector, which is nice that they give you to run inside the cab and rewiring the switch that looks exactly like the switch that I have in here already. But that's the sw style switch that I have for other accessories. So ideally I wanna put that right in the same area and have the same style switch. So I might end up doing that, which is going to take me a little bit longer than a normal install. Like I said before, I am really, really anal when it comes to wiring and getting things ni nice, neat and perfect. So, uh, but what I will do is I'm gonna temporarily hook this up and get it outside and that way you guys can see a little before and after. All right guys, so I just want to show you a quick uh, before and after with the light bar. Because the headlights and the fog lights are both tinted, I mean, they're not really putting off a whole lot of light. Doesn't look too bad on camera, but trust me, when you're driving down a pitch dark road with tinted windows and a tinted windshield with tinted headlights and fog lights, it, you can't see shit. All right, so that's headlights and fog lights both on, no light bar. That's with the light bar. The camera's making it look actually a little blue, but trust me, looking at it in person, it's completely white. So if there's one thing about this time of year that I absolutely hate, it's the lack of light. 
When I get home from work, I only really got about an hour. Sure, I have the garage, but really nothing beats daylight. So I don't really don't mind the cold so much, but the fact that it gets dark within an hour of when you're home really slows down production. So in the next video or two, I'll probably give you a little bit more of a daylight shot of the bar and the wiring, how I wrapped everything up, and a little bit more light to show you guys exactly how it all turned out. So I am very happy with the way it looks, the way it turned out. It looks about as intrusive as possible. A lot of cool stuff coming up, a lot of great content coming up, giveaways coming up, so make sure you stay tuned for that. My giveaway is probably gonna be at 5,000 subscribers, so do whatever you can, like, share the videos. As always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.